Hey, what's going on guys? James here for Rune Shark, and today I'm bringing you a Rock Lobster's Bursting Slash Barraging video. I'll just warn you before I go into the video that my voice is hurting quite a lot, and I've got a sore throat, so hopefully that won't bother you too much. Um, again, just before I start, a few things I want to go over. People keep asking what the amulet is I wear in my videos. It is a normal Fury with a Fury ornamental kit attached, and it looks like this. So that's what that is. Secondly, the Rune Shark Clan Chat. If you're bored and you want to go into a Clan Chat, then the Rune Shark Clan Chat, that is Rune Shark without a space, there you go, is always open for you to chat in. We will be in there whenever we can be and we're online. Finally, if you want to ask Rune Shark any questions, then I'll leave our Twitter information in the description of this video, and that is by far the best way to get in contact with us. So without further ado, I'm going to go into the Rock Lobsters Bursting Slash Barraging Guide. Okay, so first off we're going to go into requirements. The only quest requirement for bursting at rock lobsters is desert treasure, so you can access the ancient magic spellbook for the ice and blood burst and barrage spells. As for levels, you're going to require level 70 magic at a minimum, level 70 constu uh, constitution sorry, and level 43 prayer. You can kill rock lobsters with lower levels than these, however this is the lowest we advise if you really want to do it, and that is quite low. As for items, you're going to want lots of runes, the top magic gear, and I'll go over equipment in just a second, and then lots of supplies like prayer potions and, uh, like I said at the top, lots of runes, that kind of thing. So there are the requirements, and now I'm going to go over to gear. Okay, so before you go to Rock Lobsters, you're going to go on some good gear, so I'm going to go over what gear I've got, and then tell you how you can either improve it or downgrade it to save money or um, invest more money in making the gear even better. If you are going to do a lot of rock clusters, um, say for 88, 79, 96 or 99, then I'd definitely in advise investing in some good gear so that you can get that slightly better charm rate um, per hour and just save some more runes and money. So I'm going to load up the gear tab, like so. First you'll notice I'm wearing full arums. This can be replaced with mystic or battle robes because they give the ability to save or provide blood uh, death, chaos, runes, etc. So it will save you money. Uh, if you're into Fist of Gothics, then it's worth going for that option. I'm using a Fury Amulet. You can use a Glory, um, or even better, you can use an Arcane Stream Necklace from Dungeoneering. How I, however, don't have one of those, so I'm not using it. Well advised, using the Gothics Cape requires 60 uh, magic, so you should have it if you're bursting, obviously, and um, is free. Um, well worth getting one of these, plus 10 magic attack bonus. Um, the amount of people you see Bursting in a skill cape, don't use a Guthix cape, Zaradoin cape, or Zamrock cape, well worth it. You can obviously use Mystic gloves when using Barrow's gloves because they offer a better bonus. Infinity gloves work well as well. Infinity boots obviously can be replaced with um, Wizard boots if you fancy, however, I think these are about half the price of Wizard boots, so worth going this option. Obviously, Water Staff, Ancient Staff, Staff of Light obviously gives a bonus, uh, 15, plus 15% damage bonus, and also offers a um, a 1 out of 8 chance of using no runes. This will save you money, and they're well worth the investment. Obviously, you can use an Ancient Staff instead, if you want to. And then I've got a Mage's book, but a Zamorok book, an um, Unholy book, works fine as well, um, as do some other books, however, like a, maybe a Book of Balance, Guthix book. Um, but I'd go Zamorok or Mage's Book if you can. Obviously you could use an Arcane Spirit Shield if you have one, however I don't. I've then gone for Seer's Ring Eye, that's imbued from mobilising armies. You could go for the standard Seer's Ring, or many people use the Ring of Life in case they disconnect and they want to ring a life away, obviously because if you die you're going to lose a lot of money. However I will go on later in the guide how to get your grave blessed and uh, how to stand a very good chance of survival if you do die. Okay, so as for the inventory, um, stupid prayer pots, you can just take prayer pots. I've got one brew for safety, you can take some more brews if you like. I've then got the proselyte armor to swap out for an, uh, a gain in prayer bonus for when I'm luring the rock lobsters. This will um, save me lots of prayer, so as you can see, plus 30 prayer, 
as opposed to if I just use this gear plus five. So that saves me a lot of prayer and lets me la uh, allows me to st uh, stay there a lot, a lot longer. Runes for barrage. However, if you can bring um, death, water, and chaos in order to use ice burst. However, I'm using ice barrage. I've just got a few runes for this video, just to, just a random amount, just to uh, show you how to do it. Tele tab to get away. One of each charm, so I don't have to worry about making a space when I get there. And then I'm using a Wolpertinger. The reason is the scroll boosts your magic level by plus 7. So if you can use it at level, I believe, 92 summoning, then it is well worth it. If you don't, then you can bring a Bunyip or something like that if you fancy. If not, you can just use the Blood spell. So I'm using Blood Barrage. But you can also use um, Blood Burst if you want to heal your life points instead. So that's all for the inventory setup, and now we're going to walk all the way to the Dagonoff King, uh, the, well, near the Dagonoff Kings to the Rock Lobsters area. Okay, so to get to the Rock Lobsters, you're going to want to go to Waterbirth Island and into this dungeon. So you can either start at the Sears Village Bank, where you geared up, where I was, and you can walk north, and you want to get to Releka and this dock here. Or you can do what I'm about to do, and if your house is here in uh, the Fremenic province, then you can use a house tab and exit your house um, into this area here and just walk to the dock. So that's what I'm going to do. So if you don't have a house there, then you just need to simply walk up straight north from the Sears Village Bank. So I'm about to exit now, and you will need a partner for this. If you don't have a partner, then you can go to the bursting lobs spell like that clan chat and in there you'll find world 66 for door partner so if you go to world 66 you'll find a partner to do the doors with there and it's always really busy so there's always at any time someone to uh, find a door partner with anyway so I'm going to now walk to the dungeon Okay, so you want to rest outside, and then when your run is full, you want to be with your partner, head into the tunnel, and with your partner, so first of all, you want to go to the south door, so inside, you want to head south, like I am now, you can pray melee in here, because you will get hit. For some reason I've started lagging quite bad. I think one of my friends has started downloading. The housemates I live with have started downloading something. So you head to the south door. You need to open this door. So you each need to stand on a pad to open the door. And then you need to open another door. If you think you can use rune throwing axes, Jagex nerf this and you can no longer use the rune throwing axe special attack. So what you want to do is you want to get to the north door. And stand on the pad and open it up. So then one of your friends needs to go through the north pad, and then you need to run back and get through the south door before it closes again. Which it should make just here, like so. It will be close, so you've got to run fast. So once through, in here you want to pray range. If you're through south, melee if you're through north. And you want to get to the end. Once at the end, you can range each other's doors, or he's ranging, I'm going to use uh, an eye splits on this door over here in order to take it down like so I've taken his door down or I should have done try melleeing it there we go so he's ranged mine and I can melee his and then you want to go down praying mage and that's why you want to pray mage because I'm about to die because I'm lagging so bad you want to pray range in the second room I need to drink some of my brew because I'm lagging so bad you can stroll through here and gain back some run. I don't really have to worry about food because I can use the um, blood spells when I'm back through. So when you get to this section here, you want to pray range again. But you're going to want to uh, pray magic for the next three sections when you get down this ladder here. And again, I've been owned quite badly. And I didn't pray magic, which is terrible because I'm lagging so badly. So this is how not to do it, I'm not going to lie, lagging really hard. Ooh. 
like I said, mage for three sections, and then you want to go back and have a quick rest here and get to full life points. Sorry, not life points, um, run energy. Okay, so once you're full run energy, you just want to uh, stroll through here. This is fine, you don't need to pray here. Though I should, like I said, lagging so badly that I've uh, actually managed to miss every single prayer so far and get absolutely destroyed, use my whole brew. I didn't really have to worry though, because once I'm there, um, like you said, like if it's your first type, definitely, then you want to um, bring more than one brew. Um, especially if it's your first time. I didn't expect to lag this bad. Anyway, pray range up here, and then the final section here is pray melee in a second. So when you run through here, you want to pray melee. So yeah, if it's your first time, then definitely bring more than one brew. If you're experienced and you're lagging, uh, obviously bring more than one brew. Once you're down there, it should be fine, because you can pray melee and you have the blood spells um, to use at all times. Obviously, I don't at the minute, because I've brewed so many times. So once you're down, run behind the ladder, and you need to find yourself a free world. So you'll notice there's somebody else there, so now I need to find myself a free world. Okay, so after hopping around 15 worlds, I managed to find myself a world, and it's actually the French world. And uh, just did a quick run, um, as you can see the loot on the floor there, um, just to clear it out and make sure it's all good. Okay, so right now I'm going to bring up some information about Rock Lobsters on your screen on a callout. That's the general information about Rock Lobsters. And then I'm going to use the guide I'm in, in the process of writing on the Rune Shack website on the Rock Lobsters guide, as you can see. And then. Um, First of all, we're going to go for sa uh, the safe spots you need to use. So obviously you want to kill these rock lobsters from a safe spot, and there's two you can use. The first is the ladder safe spot, which is where I'm stood right now, as you can see in this picture. And the second is the U-turn safe spot. So I'll quickly demonstrate the ladder safe spot. This is the safer safe spot, but once you've lured your lobsters, you literally stand where this uh, my familiar currently is. And you can just, I'll just quickly cast a blood spell. You can kill the rock lobsters like so. This is the safer safe spot, as you've got less chance of being attacked by Dagonoffs, however they, uh, it's not the most common because it requires luring them past torches and stuff, and it takes a little bit longer. So the most common safe spot is, as I'm about to show you, just as follows. So first you're going to know, you need to know how to lure the Rock Lobsters. You want to get all nine Rock Lobsters on you. I'm going to bring up a call out now, showing you the furthest you're allowed to run. The reason for that is, you, when you lure the 8th and the ninth Lobster on you, you don't want to go any further. If you go any further, then the first rock lobster you lord will go unaggressive, and this will spell disaster as you're running around everywhere with rock lobsters following you. So when luring, you want to run to the spot, which is uh, pointed out by the red dot, which I'll show you in a second. And then you want to get the Dagonos on you using a technique I'm about to show you. So I've, some of my familiar, and I've used a scroll, I'll just use another scroll. And that gives me 106 out of 99 magic. I then make sure I'm wielding my proselyte and soul wars cape. Pray from melee, and then I start lowering. So there was some lobsters here, however they've uh, already gone on me. So I just get the lobsters on me, and um, just pick up the uh, lobsters. Make sure they all come around the corner, and then you will see there's a dagonoff. You see these dagonoffs are very annoying. So what you have to do is you have to come down here, and this is where the red dot is, right here. And you'll see that when you stand on it, it picks up the eighth and the ninth lobster together. You don't want to go any further. You then want to run into this crevice here by the torch. And this will get rid of these Dagonoffs here. So once you're in, run round, the Dagonoffs will get stuck and the Rock Lobsters will continue. You can then use this safe spot here. So you want to stand right here. This slightly darker patch. Take your Prey Melee off. Swap to your Arims. And that's basically the simple law. Then this is the U-turn law um, safe spot. You then just want to simply cast Ice Barrage or Ice Burst. I will go over the spells in a, uh, in a second on the Lobsters. This is really simple. Okay, so while I'm killing these, um, if you need to heal, so obviously you can see you can get attacked by some Dagonoffs and some Mages down there, some ranged Dagonoffs, um, as well as many Dagonoffs, and uh, a Mage down there. I'm not even going to pronounce what it's called, a, a Wolanowski, something like that. You can use Blood Barrage like so, just to heal up to a full HP. You'll also find that when you're killing these lobsters, you will end up with a lobster that has a small amount of life points left. So you'll end up with one lobster left alive, and here I've got two. You can see they're low life points. If you want to increase the charm rate per 1k barrages or per amount of spells you use, then a method you can use is to put on your armor, put protect from melee on, and melee the final rock lobster. Now this works best with a crush weapon, and actually works really quite well. So what you want to do is, 
you want to melee the final rock lobster dead like so. There's actually two there. But you've also got to be careful because there's a rock lobster that spawns and can attack you. So once you've lured them, um, you want to pray melee to pick up your loot. I'll bring up a call out on the screen as you probably just saw of um, some good weapons to use. Um, they include the chaotic maul. The ancient staff is actually quite good. A god sword and a Zamrockian spear. But then you want to just pick up your charms. So I'm um, just picking up my charms. And I'm honestly not sure what they're called in French, I'll be deadly honest. I think I got them. And then you want to just do the same over and over again. So we start the lore, and as you can see, sometimes the Dagonath gets on you, which is why this spot is actually slightly safer, however slightly more tricky. So, again, just lure the rock lobsters on you. Make sure they're all following. Obviously one stuck on the ladder. Make sure they're all following, and you get them around this corner. So now, while I do this, I'm just going to talk a bit about bursting and barraging. So after doing, obviously I've got 99 magic, so has my partner um, uh, Simon for Rune Shark, and we've got most of our charms for summoning all in this area um, right here, Rock Lobsters. Now we've got much experience in killing Rock Lobsters, and we've found that using Burst and Barrage actually yields at the same cost per GP for um, Crimson Charms. So what you want to do is... You want to, um, actually I'm going to quickly demonstrate, because this Dagonoff's on me, I'm going to try and demonstrate the second law spot. And try and get rid of it. However, this rock lobster has attacked my familiar, which is really annoying. I'm going to go get it back on me. There we go. That's why the familiar can be slightly annoying. Um, up to you whether you want to use it, but I'm going to demonstrate this law spot here. Anyway, my point was that... Um, using Burst and Barrage actually yields about the same cost per GP for Crimson Charms. This means that by using Barrage instead of Burst, you're actually just saving yourself time. And as you'll find, this can be quite boring, despite being fast charms, can really be quite boring. So if you can save yourself some um, a lot of time by using Barrage, then it's definitely worthwhile. So if you're 94 plus magic, I would advise always using Ice Barrage, as it basically just saves you time and yields about the same cost per GP per Crimson Charm. As for Charm rates, you'll find that for a Barrage here, this is purely rough estimate, you're getting around 400 to 420 Crimsons, and as for a Burst, between 280 and 300 Crimsons, that's per 1k. Obviously, you also get other Charms, so as you can see, I've actually currently got more Gold Charms than I do um, uh, Crimson Charms at the minute. It is also good when you get blue charms, as these are worth, um, each blue charm is worth two crimson charms, and you will sometimes get them. So in this spot as well, you will find that a uh, rock lobster will spawn when you try and loot your items, which is annoying. As you see, I've just got some blue charms right there. Okay, so as you've seen, actually um, luring and killing rock lobsters isn't as hard as you first thought, and it is actually quite easy and a brilliant way to get charms. But what if you die? So obviously if you didn't bring a ring of life like me, I'm using a Sears ring eye, not that you can tell in French, um, you could die. Now if you do die, then you want to go back to that clan chat you used to get into the room, which is bursting lobs, all one word. In this clan chat, there are many people, and if you ask someone nicely, they will hop and bless for you. So if someone did bless your grave for you, then... Um, Please, if you do come back, stay in this clan chat and try and repay your debt in case somebody else dies. If you give them details of where your grave is, they will hop and bless it for you. There are a lot of nice people in this clan chat. It's also a really good way to stay entertained whilst bursting rock lobsters. And so um, a very well-advised clan chat to be in whilst actually here. Because everyone's bored doing the same thing and up for a chat. Like I said, if you do want to get in to the... Um, uh, Rock Lobster's area, then it's World 66 for Door Partner. That's to get in. So that's everything from this Rock Lobster's Guide. Um, please feel free to subscribe um, to the Rune Shark channel. Check out the Rune Shark website and give this video a rating.